Hi everyone, I'm Sammy. This is about, this video is about the Sagittarius new moon, which is a solar eclipse happening on the 3rd and 4th, depending on where you are. For those of us on the East Coast, it will be the 4th around 2 a.m. Saturday. This energy has already begun right now, tonight, but we're going to feel it all day tomorrow into Saturday. It will just peak around midnight to 2 a.m. Friday night to Saturday morning. And then we'll even still be feeling this into the next full moon and then even until the next six months until we start another eclipse cycle. So uh, the moon is in Sagittarius. This brings a lot of hope, a lot of optimism in certain ways, but it also brings major shifts, realizations, change, epiphany, uh, ways that you're learning about yourself, the things that you need to let go of, the toxic things that maybe you've tried really hard to, to make happen for yourself. This is where you're putting in all of your energy to things that really aren't going the way you want it. And this is also ending the 19-year cycle from the 2002 eclipse. So if you think about where you were around this time, 2002, we're ending major cycles. So if you want, what you should do is look in your birth chart where Sagittarius is and... Um, that will help you look at the house and see where you'll be feeling this the most. As well as we have Venus in Capricorn, and that will be retrograding on the 18th of this month. So as that happens, we're going to be able to reassess the areas in Capricorn. So look in your chart for where Capricorn is. And that is where we're going to be reassessing. Of course, you don't want to get into a new relationship. Really, you probably don't want to start a new job during a Venus retrograde. Anything regarding money, like major investments, might want to wait until the end of January when it will be coming back direct in Capricorn. And it's going to stay in Capricorn until March. Um, during this time in retrograde, you can kind of see things in a misconstrued way when it comes to love and money. You may meet someone and you think like, oh, they're awesome. And then when Venus comes back direct, they're like, no, this is the worst mistake I ever made. And so you don't want to do that in love. And you don't want to get carried away into someone or wrapped up into someone. And, and that's, um, they're not really giving a, a correct portrayal of their character. Right. And we don't want to do that when it comes to money either. We don't want to invest in something, go all in on something and then realize that there was a really a bad investment. So we just want to be extra careful after December 18th. Now, as well, yesterday we had Neptune come direct. So for the last five months, while Neptune was retrograde in Pisces, which is dreamy in itself, and Neptune rules Pisces, so this is just extra super illusions, and Neptune controls the media. So we've been trying to, they've been trying to sell us a story, okay? Very deceptive. Neptune can be deception, and in Pisces, it can be very much like fantasy realm, and illusion and trying to to see a story that's not really there so we could have been trying to make things happen for ourselves that weren't really possible and just really unrealistic okay um so while neptune was in retrograde we would have felt really lost kind of really confused but what it did was give us more time to assess. So Neptune retrograde, any retrograde is just giving you time basically to go over something, to look back on something, to reassess, to reevaluate, to see where you could have made change um, and where you should make change moving forward. So this energy is very important 
because now that it's direct, it's like, okay, the fog is lifted and we're coming out of this stage of confusion where we've been the last five months or it may have felt kind of unreal, kind of dreamy, kind of like, <laughs> is this real? Like all, all the things that we've seen in social uh, on the world stage, like, is this really happening? Like, what? None of this makes any sense. That's how I feel. Um, so I know a lot of you feel the same way. So now people are kind of starting to get their wits about them again. People are starting to question things more, being like, wait a second. We're coming out of that confusion. We're, we're noticing more, I think, with the media as well and how they're saying one thing and then flipping their story or how um, they're trying to really push a certain narrative. That's obviously not the case. Okay, and so now this is about what are they going to try to sell us now? Because the media, things have been coming out, right? Yesterday and today. Um, there's always something coming out, but about the media, um, different commenters or I don't know, news anchors, I don't know what you would call them, um, losing their jobs, just a lot of weird, shady, deceptive stuff that might be coming up now. So think about this on the world stage, of course, but also in your personal life. So individually, what is it that's become clear for you? How are you willing to make those changes now moving forward? So that's in Pisces, okay? So you may look in your chart and see where is Pisces, which house, and then you may um, be noticing more about how you feel. For instance, I have Pisces is uh, in my eighth house. So for me, that's a very hidden occult, psychic, astrology, tarot. That's my like that's my love and Pisces is also my north node so that's what I meant to do this life and I love it but the last five months when Neptune was in retrograde I really didn't feel as connected as I normally do and um, last weekend and then even through this week as Neptune was coming closer to being direct I feel more at peace I feel more in tune again and it's like okay thanks Neptune so think about the ways the pieces are kind of coming back together now. And this solar eclipse in Sagittarius is really going to seal the deal, possibly in another area of life. But it's all kind of pushing you forward. This is a new journey. Uh, the journey is all about Sagittarius. But new moons as well bring a new beginning. So this is a great time to make major shifts in your life. And you'll see the people around you making big decisions about family and relationships, career choices, and um, maybe like traveling more. People want to return to traveling and the media, right, is trying to sell us a new story of a new scary variant with very mild symptoms. So let's just be really aware of the media, okay? Don't get, get sold on on a story that is not reality, that's very deceptive. Uh, fear is a major player right now and they're gonna use that. So as long as we know we're in, at peace and we're feeling optimistic and hopeful because of this Sagittarian moon, we're going to be feeling better about the direction we're headed in. So overall, the energy is very high it feels like it's really building towards more and more and more. And we kind of see more of the deceptive energy and the stories that, that they're trying to portray, which uh, may or may not be true, but we have to use our discernment. With Neptune being direct, I feel like that's going to be a lot easier for us. So I just want to pull a few cards for the collective for this solar eclipse, total solar eclipse, which is bringing so much energy and optimism but really big change so we went through this whole scorpio season which is about death rebirth transformation and it can kind of be toxic because we're shown all of the things about ourselves we don't like the things about the relationships or our careers that we don't like and it's about moving past that so 
what are the toxic things that you're letting go of? Could be bad habits, could be addictions, uh, could be relationships, could be your boss, your career, it could be that you want to diet or exercise or want to go back to school. And so you have to let go of one thing to make room for something new to move forward on this journey. So uh, I want you to be thinking about those things. What is it that you're letting go? It's kind of a trade-off, okay? But this thing, we know it's negative, we know it's toxic, and we know that it's bad for us. And this is the thing that, that we've maybe like, this is like, um, it's like, like, I uh, forget the, the word for it. Uh, I have a tarot card, actually, that says it. I, I can't believe I forgot the word. It's so simple. It's like when you love someone and they don't love you back. What is it? R something with an R. Anyways, the point is, think of the thing in your life that you've been pouring your energy into, that you really wanted it to work, okay? And it's just not. That is for some of us. That is like your spirit's been telling you for a long time, the universe, the astrology, everything's been telling you for a long time and showing you again and again and again. This is toxic. This is bad. Look at this situation. Oh, it happened again. Oh, miscommunication again. And that's the thing. Stop giving your all to something that's not reciprocating. It's not bringing you anything back and it's not becoming what you thought it would be by now right so that's the kind of stories you don't want to be selling yourself a story either right we don't want to be getting involved in some sort of uh, storyline in our mind uh, creating some sort of fantasy realm that's not realistic like if you love someone with all your heart and they don't ever call you back and they really want nothing to do with you, and they're talking to other people online, and you see them out with other people, like, mm, maybe they're just not into you, you know, or maybe your career, you poured everything into it, and you thought you would have been promoted, or making way more money by now, and you're just not, so maybe there's something that you're more passionate about, we want to go in the direction of things that we feel really hopeful about right now, really good about, not the things that really aren't showing up, we want to show up for the things in our lives that are portraying to us more value, uh, more self-worth, of course, and ourselves make us feel good and that light you up, make you feel really passionate and get excited about this new journey. So think about those things that you're letting go of and how the Sagittarian new moon will help boost you forward into this new uh, hopeful thing that you can commit to. And then just beware of this Venus in retrograde coming on the 18th. And that is actually connected to a Venus retrograde from the 2013-2014 period. So you may be revisiting an issue that you had at that time or a cycle is ending. Maybe you've learned a lot since that time and things are coming full circle for you. So that would be good just to to really uh, think about that time where you were for when this Venus retrograde comes around on December 18th. Okay, Spirit, please tell us about the total solar eclipse tomorrow evening. What is the collective energy? Okay, Emperor in reverse. So for some of us, uh, we may just kind of be self-doubting a little bit not having enough assertiveness to be able to maybe not only speak up, but just to feel confident. The emperor is usually like the man. He's got a plan. He's very serious. He's, um, he is restrained. He is diligent and disciplined. And this is um, an Aries energy. This is like a really strong initiator wanting to get stuff done type energy so being that it's in reverse makes it feel like maybe we're feeling a little bit powerless still maybe not fully confident in where we're headed so that's fine as long as we know where we're going when the full moon comes in gemini which i believe is on it might be on the 18th the 18th and 19th, the same time that Venus is going retrograde in Capricorn, 
the moon will be full in Gemini. So by this time, we should be really ready to make uh, a move, take action. It's okay if you can't do that right now. We just want to think about it right now. Okay, so for some of us, we're still not quite confident. And then we have five of cups in reverse. So some of us may be overindulging a little bit in ourselves. We don't really want to do that. But we may be feeling restricted when it comes to emotion. This is um, getting over, moving past disappointments, though. This is like letting go of those things that have been disappointments. The toxicity and the bad habits and the addictions and uh, the things that have really hurt us. So we're getting over, moving past pain. The people in your life who have brought you disappointment um, or hurt you repeatedly. This is the time where we see we're not quite confident yet. But we're moving towards a place where we're ready to take action. Here we go. Here's some action coming in. And I feel this with this air card, Knight of Swords, this is air. So by the time this Gemini full moon comes around, we will be ready to take action. We also have this, we, we may need to forgive a little bit here. This is Six of Cups, but it's in reverse. So this could be revisiting past issues okay a lot of things are coming up for people we're purging so much energy this happens every eclipse season but coming out of that scorpio season we're definitely purging negativity toxicity bad habits um, toxic relationships uh, communication issues these things are going to be coming up this is definitely things from our past this is visiting revisiting childhood soulmates even but this is in reverse okay so sometimes this card lets me know that there's a need to forgive there's a need to let go of something okay um that feeling of love that feeling of maybe that soulmate energy maybe isn't quite there right now and so that may kind of make us feel like we need to go in a new direction i feel that with this card it's more of a reflective energy internally for ourselves. So this could be more subconscious, but uh, this is something that you would have gotten a few flags about by now. You would have gotten a few signs from spirit and the universe at this point. So uh, thinking about how to take action when maybe you feel not as supported as you usually would. We do feel pretty supported right now by the universe. Um, kind of. The moon uh, the moon is going to be really pushing us to make change. And I feel like we do feel still a little bit restricted in many ways, but we are gaining more hope now. So there is a need to forgive, possibly. Some people are not wanting to forgive or not wanting to revisit. These things have to come up. They need to come up. And I want to mention too, everything we've been going through. Oh, looky here. Six of Pentacles. This is about uh, equal give and take. This is about putting in as much as you want to get out. And putting in the effort in relationships. And only giving to things that are giving back. Stop giving your energy to people and places and things who aren't giving you back what you feel is equal. Okay? It needs to be equal. Uh, and, but I just forgot what I was going to say about this. Oh, I wanted to mention the last two years, everything had to happen. Okay? So when we think about the energy, this is the same in our personal lives. Everything we've gone through, everything that's coming up is kind of like a prerequisite. Okay, this is a, uh, it needed to happen in order for us to get pushed to the point where we're ready to do something about it. If it didn't get hard, if it didn't hurt, if it didn't squeeze you and make you feel insane at times, you wouldn't want to do anything about it. You wouldn't have that oomph and that fire that makes you want to make change. So all of this was needed. This was all part of the plan. And spirit is just so brilliant. God is just so brilliant. And the universe is always working for you. So let's take this, this solar eclipse and 
really just allow this energy to settle within you, okay? Let go of those things, surrender to those things, and get prepared in your mind to take action more towards the middle of the month, towards the 18th and 19th, when the full moon in Gemini occurs. We'll have more clarity, we'll know exactly what we need to do, and Mars will be there to give us the energy and get us ready to go. So I hope you guys are having a great week and you enjoy this weekend with the solar eclipse and I'll catch you in the next one.